Uncle Iroh at Otakon. Yeah! Originally, I was going to go to Otakon and, and premiere a bit I've been working on called Uncle Iroh's Wedding Toast for Zuko. <laughs> but, M. Night Shyamalan and Ding Dong made a bad movie. What a twist! <laughs> he took source material and refused to read it. So I'm going up as Uncle I.O. And I'm destroying it. I'm going to do to M. Night Shyamalan Ding Dong's movie what his movie did to Avatar The Last Airbender. Start off. The only thing canon in that movie was the boomerang. I'm sorry, the boomerang. <laughs> Apparently, he did what Michael Bay did in Transformers 2. Michael Bay made explosions boring in Transformers 2. Shyamalan made kung fu boring. <laughs> How do you do that? You make it very shrow. So shrow, no one notices. And they got the bitch from Slumdog Millionaire to play Zuko, so rather than looking Chinese, the Fire Nation looks Al Qaeda. <laughs> oh, rapture! No, don't worry. This is not anything worse than race bending. It's not like the it's not like the, the Water Nation was like Inuit Indian or anything. They're just flat out white. Guitar, she turns white when you add cold water. It's fantastic. It's what the toys are gonna do now. <laughs> they took all the humor out. They took all the bending action out, they took all the character inner drama out, and they made Asif Mandvi from The Daily Show the main villain. So in the second movie, Ron Riggle will play the boulder, and Stephen Colbert will play the cabbage man. <laughs> you want to talk about race bending? Why is Appa in blackface? The only way to ruin that movie further would if Momo would be voiced by Gilbert Godfrey. Oh, God. Ag! We should go get some gin! <laughs> These extreme close-ups are dumb. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Every scene that they cut away to is unnecessary. That's how brilliantly composed it was. Uncle Iroh has dreadlocks. He's the hobo uncle. He's the cool stone uncle. Grand. They've already gotten it wrong. Fantastic. He made the movie for his children, which tells me he hates his children. He hates his children. He burns his children. He kicks them. You know, we saw signs that the movie was going to be bad. We saw signs. I had the sixth sense going on. We thought the script was unbreakable, but no. We saw the lady go down. We saw the lady in the water and the happening in the Earth Village. And you know what? It failed. What a twist. <laughs> Coming from a man who spent his film career making fantasy movies for adults, you should know better. Shame on you. The director commentary should be, I am so sorry. I, oh my god, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I am so sorry. Oh god, are they still talking? I am so sorry. I am still sorry. Rewind that. Say, I'm sorry again. No, not even like copy and paste the same sorry 1,400 times. Have him live. Have him there watching the movie. Because I don't think he did before releasing this. It's like going from Star Wars, A New Hope, to Star Wars, A Phantom Menace. <laughs> That's how big of a jump down this was. That's how he took something fantastic, the only good cartoon to come out of America. Justice League. Yeah. 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 All right, let's change that. The last good non-Batman the Animated Series to come out of America. He took something with amazing aesthetic, wonderful humor, relatable characters, true drama, and amazing action. The final fight, the final episode of Avatar is Captain Planet meets Dragon Ball Z. It's what Dragon Ball Z should have been. I will kick a mountain toward you because my feet are fire. I don't have rocket boots. I have rocket fire feet. But no. He took that out and he gave us this. He gave us this pile that we have to say no to. You have to say no to and you have to neuter the man. To do something. You have to, you have to take something from him and give it back. <laughs> 